Aloha Kako. My name is Jenny Choi. I head up school and library marketing at Abrams. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I come to you today from the Pai Aina of Hawaii on the island of Oahu. Generations of my ancestors shaped the unceded Hawaiian kingdom in sustainable ways that allow us to enjoy these gifts today. For this, I am grateful as a Kanaka Maole, I recognize my kuleana to care for this aina for the many generations yet to come. And I invite you to help me in this most important endeavor. Mahalo for taking time to watch this Abrams Children's Book Spring Summer 2022 Book Buzz. The creators you'll meet represent a wide range of identities, genres, and formats, and their stories will certainly resonate with lots of readers in your classroom or library. There's something here for everyone. And now I'll turn it over to our authors and illustrators. Hello, I'm Andrea Beatty, and I'm the author of I Love You Like Yellow, illustrated by the marvelous Vashti Harrison. This is a book about the small moments, the tiny things that make up our days, that make up ultimately our memories and our lives, the flavors, the colors, the sounds, the feelings that we have. I wrote it because when my kids were little, we took these amazing vacations and just really traveled all around the country. And we would go and try to see, you know, the big deal sites, all the things that, that people need to see if they live there. And so, for instance, we went to Mount Rushmore. But now my kids are grown up, and when I ask them about that trip, they're like, yeah, there was a mountain with people on it. But that ice cream with the crunchy, crunchy toppings. Oh, that was the best ice cream I've ever had anywhere. And then there was that lemonade we got. It was so sweet and it was so tart. Oh, it was the best thing ever. And so I wanted to explore how those tiny, brilliant, perfect moments, sometimes happy, sometimes sad, but how they shape our lives and how they form our memories. So whether they be crunchy or crispy or sweet or like tart, I love you forever with all of my heart. That's how this book goes. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you love it as much as I do, which is a lot. Thank you so much. Bye. Hi, my name is Ashley Latimer, and I'm the author of Francis Discovers Possible, which is illustrated by the incredible Shahrazad Maidani. Francis Discovers Possible is a picture book about a little girl named Francis who is shamed and bullied at school for being fat. But with the help of her Baba and their shared love of words, she overcomes that shame and rediscovers the possibility in both herself and the world around her. At its core, Francis Discovers Possible is an invitation to young readers to embrace who they are, live without apology, and take control of their own stories. I'm so excited that Francis is coming into the world at a time when we're already making progress in this direction. And I really hope that she will be part of the legacy of acceptance and inclusion that we are passing on to the next generation. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn about Frances and helping us share her story with kids everywhere. Hi, I'm Ruth Chan, illustrator of How Old Is Mr. Tortoise, written by Dev Petty. And I am here to talk to you guys about a spread that I made and to talk you through a little bit about what I was thinking about. So the spread we're gonna talk about is a big math spread where all the characters are doing the math to try to figure out how old Mr. Tortoise is. And in the original manuscript, it had sort of uh, the text of the math. So it says 100 plus 10 plus five equals. And then the next spread is the big reveal of how old Mr. Tortoise is. But I felt like, you know, this is such a big climactic moment in the book. Uh, it needed a little bit of like a pause, like a little moment. So I added an extra page where after all the characters are yelling out the different numbers, the next um, page is the same characters and they're all sort of trying to figure out like, wait, what is that math? Like what is 100 plus 10 plus five? And there's very little text, very little speech, mostly them just going, um, er, uh. I love that because one, that's very much me. I am terrible at math and it takes me forever to do any sort of math equation. And two, I feel like it gives um, the readers a pause, like that moment of anticipation before we get that big reveal. And it also gives us a glimpse into the characters and 
you know, what they do in these moments of uncertainty and what their faces look like. And that was actually the most fun for me was drawing their facial expressions, the walrus being my favorite. Um, so that's a little insight into one of the spreads in How Old Is Mr. Tortoise? I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me. I'm Diana Fareed. I'm the author of Wave. Wave is a novel in verse set in 1980s Southern California. It follows a 13-year-old girl named Ava, who's a surfer girl. She's also a girl who's caught between two different cultures, a Persian immigrant family and American culture. Wave is a celebration of all of the rides that we get to take in life. And in Wave, we watch Ava tumble in more ways than one. And we see how she eventually finds her way back to the shore. One of the things that I love about Wave as well is that the main character is a character that I never saw growing up in books. She is navigating different worlds. She's navigating prejudice and cultural expectations and her own passions. And we watch Ava break through those stereotypes and it, she shows us that uh, when all of the intersections um, exist, that actually they, that can be um, a very beautiful thing. Hi, my name is Sheila Chari and I'm the author of the middle grade novel, Karthik Delivers. In my story, 14-year-old Karthik Raghavan works in his dad's store in Boston delivering groceries. Karthik is good at remembering. It's how he understands the world, how he remembers what to deliver, and the 50 flavors of ice cream from his favorite shop. It's also how he remembers all the things he's ever liked about a girl named Juhi. One day Karthik is asked by a grad student to be in her play about the famous musician Leonard Bernstein. You would be perfect, she says. I bet you could learn the lines super quick because she knows how good Karthik is at remembering. So Karthik agrees, but he doesn't tell his parents. He decides to keep it his own special secret. Then Karthik's life starts to change. And he wonders if he can dream about something no one he knows has ever done. The world seems to have many opinions about this. His 17-year-old sister, who wants to be a lawyer, tells Karthik that it's the job of every parent to crush their children's dream. Juhi, the girl he's liked ever since kindergarten, says it's tough to be an actor if you're an Indian because Indians don't have a chance. And then there's Karthik's mom, who leaves him articles on open heart surgery. She says the only people safe in this world are those with good jobs, like doctors. It's up to Karthik to make up his own mind. I wrote this book because it's hard to make different choices from the ones your parents made, especially if they arrived in this country from somewhere else, determined to work hard and to bring up their children to be even more successful than them. I also wrote this book because the world is rapidly changing and it's important for kids to know that they can try everything and be anything, whether it's performing on a stage or in an operating room, being on TV or writing stories from their own living room. I hope you enjoy Karthik's lists, his quirky humor, and that you'll root for him on his journey to self-discovery. Hi, I'm Marty Dumas, and I'm a mom, teacher, and writer from New Orleans, and I'm also the author of Wild Seed Witch. Okay, let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. Yes, I am from New Orleans, and a thing that people tell me all the time when they hear that I'm from New Orleans is that they think that New Orleans is filled with some kind of magic. And as a native New Orleanian, 
I'm here to tell you that yes, it absolutely is. That is 100% true. And in fact, all of Southeast Louisiana is filled with magic. It just might not be the kind that you're expecting, or at least it's not the kind that Hassani was expecting in Wild Seed Witch. You see, Hassani just only wanted to be a YouTuber. That's it. Maybe get like a hundred subscribers for her channel and dare to dream. Someday, maybe possibly get to meet her favorite YouTuber. Instead, she finds out that she's a witch and not just any witch, a witch who gets an invitation to one of the best finishing schools for witches in the world that just happens to be right here in Southeast Louisiana. Pretty much everyone else there is rich and has known about witches since the day they were born. So Hassani is in over her head, or if you'll allow the platitude, it's time for her to either sink or swim. Sorry. Okay, well, I love this story because Yes, it's about hashtag black girl magic, but also it's about black girl awkward. It's about being confused and about making friends and figuring out your enemies and basically everything that makes all of us human. So I hope that you love Hassani as much as I do and that you will give your readers a chance to be able to flow into the world of the Wild Seed Witches. Hi, I'm Chad Lucas. I'm the author of Thanks A Lot Universe, and I have a new middle grade novel coming in spring 2022 called Let the Monster Out. Uh, Let the Monster Out is the story of a boy named Bones Malone who moves to a small town called Langell with his family. They're looking to make a fresh start, but not long after they get to town, some strange things start happening. Um, adults' personalities start changing, including Bones' mom. And not long after, Bones and his little brother share the same dream, the same nightmare at the same time. Uh, so kids in town start having uh, shared nightmares. Uh, and Bones has to figure out why is this happening and who's behind it um, before people, especially adults and especially his mom, start to lose themselves completely. Uh, but he can't do it alone. He has to make friends with some boys on his baseball team, including a boy named Kyle Spex, who is a kid who's, you know, he knows he's different from other kids, but he's trying to figure out exactly what that means and, and where he fits. So Bones and Kyle and their teammates, they have to um, confront this mystery and figure out what's going on in their town. And in the process, they have to confront their own fears and Bone ha Bones has to deal with some things uh, from his past that he would rather forget, but uh, he has to kind of go through them uh, to, to figure out what's happening. Um, so this was a really fun book to write. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a sort of mystery adventure kind of story. Um, I got to do some really fun things with nightmares and bend the rules of reality a little bit. Um, but there's also some, some deeper things going on. I explore a little bit about, you know, what does it mean to be afraid and what does it really mean to face our fears? You know, sometimes the, the surface level fear is not the real thing and there's something deeper going on underneath. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a bit different from my, my first middle grade novel, but uh, at the same time, there's um, some of those same kind of heartfelt themes uh, and people kind of exploring who they are. Um, and I had a lot of fun with this one and I look forward to seeing it on shelves in spring 2022. Hi, I'm Lori Morrison, and I'm so excited to tell you about my new middle grade novel, Coming Up Short, which stars a softball-loving 13-year-old girl named B. At the end of seventh grade, on the same day that B makes a gutsy play at shortstop to send her team to the league championships, a scandal shakes up her world. Her dad has made a big mistake. He mismanaged client funds and took money that wasn't his. Now he's suspended from practicing law and another lawyer who happens to be the father of Bee's crush has spread the news online. Bee doesn't wanna be angry with her dad. She knows he feels terrible and he's trying to make things right and he needs her to be on his team. But she can't bear everyone else's pity and judgment. And at the championship game, in front of everybody, she gets completely stuck in her own head. Suddenly, she can't make a simple throw to first base, and she makes error after error. 
When summer begins, Bee gets a chance to escape everything. She gets to go visit her aunt for two weeks on Gray Island, where she'll attend a special softball camp, and she's determined to fix her throw and get back to her fierce, confident self. But that might not be possible unless she can find a way to deal with the hard feelings she just wants to push away. Bee is gonna need to figure out how to forgive her parents for the ways that they've come up short, and how to forgive herself make amends and move on when she comes up short too. This is a book about performance anxiety, the yips, and the pressure that comes along with being serious about a sport, as well as all the great things about being serious about a sport and part of a team. It's about the complicated bonds between people who love each other and the ways that we depend on each other and we bring each other joy. And yet, no one person, and especially no one kid, can be responsible for another person's happiness and emotional well-being. Bee's full name, Beatrix, means she who brings joy. And I chose that because I wanted to write about this kid who has internalized the idea that it's somehow her job to make her parents happy. But the truth is, Bee has also brought me a whole lot of joy during a really hard time. I have loved writing the sports scenes in this novel. I have loved going back to Gray Island, which was the setting of my book Up For Air, and the place that Bee goes to visit her aunt. It was really wonderful to get to be with Bee near the ocean, at least on the pages of my novel, at a time when I could barely leave my own house. So I hope that Bee and her story will bring a lot of joy to readers too. And I also hope that it will help readers to have compassion for themselves when they come up short, even when they're trying their best. Hi, my name is Diana Ma. I'm here to talk about Her Rebel Highness. Book two of the Daughters of the Dynasty series, which is an epic romantic series that follows the descendants of Empress Wu Zetian, the first female monarch of China. Book one, Eris apparently, follows the story of Gemma, a young Chinese American actress who goes to China for the first time as a young adult and discovers um, all kinds of family secrets. So book two follows the story of Lei, Gemma's mother, in 1989 as a young girl in China during a very fraught period of time. In 1989, um, there was a lot going on, but one of the big things that was happening was the Tiananmen Square protests, and Lei's imagination is caught by the protest. She sees the injustice all around her, and she wants to be a part of the change. So um, she, ha she wants very much to join these protests, but there are, there are a few things holding her back and she has some tough choices to make. One thing that is holding her back is that her father happens to be a high-ranking Communist Party official and he's pretty invested in protecting the family and he feels that one of the best things he can do is stop the, these protests. And Lei, to a degree, understands why, because her family has a huge secret that could uh, put them at great risk. And it has to do with the art mystery that I teased in Eris, apparently, and continues on in Her Rebel Highness. When I was Lei's age, I, I watched on television here in the US these protests unfold in China, and my imagination was caught by them as well. Um, it was a very powerful moment, and I think in looking back on it, it was what started my own journey of protest in the U.S. and my involvement in protest movements. So I drew upon that experience when I was writing Lei's story. and. Um, my choices were different from Lay's, but her, but she has a lot of um, universal decisions to make as a young adult. Is her duty towards family? Is it towards uh, changing the world for better? Discovering love for the first time? And just ambition, figuring out who she wants to be. So there, there's a lot in Her Rebel Highness that I pull from my own life, even though it's a historical novel set in a country different from the one I live in. And I hope that you enjoy it. Thank you. Hello, 
everyone, Sajani Patel here to talk to you about my sister's big fat Indian wedding, which is a YA rom-com that comes out in 2022. The story follows Rika Damani, an Indian American teenager who wants to pursue musical college because she happens to be very gifted with the violin. Now her family has other plans for her. They want her to go into pre-law and follow the footsteps of her older and very successful sisters. The thing is, is that Zuri has a chance to get noticed by scouts of the nation's most leading musical colleges during a competition. However, the problem is, is that this competition falls on the week of her sister's big fat Indian wedding. This book was definitely inspired by my brother's own big fat Indian wedding. He in fact had four pages of a schedule, including some choreographed Bollywood style dances, which is seen in the book. The thing about my brother's wedding is that it was so cinematic and theatrical and full of color and vibrance and so loving that I just wanted to live in that moment forever. And I really couldn't get it out of my head. So I ended up writing the story and I really want to share with readers what it was like to be in that moment with my brother, um, participating in and just enjoying this wedding with him. And the thing about Azuri is that she not only has this big wedding to juggle with the competition, but there's also a sort of a love interest that comes along. He is visiting from South Africa, for the groom side of the wedding and he's also going for this competition so Zuri has a lot to balance and the thing is is that she's got a lot of boisterous family to go along with her sister's big fat Indian wedding so I hope that you get to read the book and I hope that you've enjoyed it as much as I have writing it thank you hi everyone my name is Ray Stobie and my pronouns are they, them. My second novel, Arden Gray, when the story opens, Arden is struggling. Her parents have separated and her mother has moved out and she's coping through her love of film photography and her relationship with her best friend, Jamie. But when Jamie gets his first girlfriend, Arden's insecurity grows and she starts to wonder if she's jealous or if Jamie's relationship is as unhealthy as she thinks it is. When the tension causes a rift in their friendship, she's forced to branch out and make new friends and reconsider how much of her relationship with her mom was unhealthy too. To me, the central idea of the story can be summed up in the book's tagline. How do you learn to trust yourself? More specifically, how do you recover your sense of self when a central relationship in your life has taught you to doubt that, to fear rejection and abandonment if you assert yourself? Friendship can be an important site of healing for those wounds. And Arden learns who she is outside of her mother's shadow by coming out of her shell, making new friends, starting to share her photography with the world, and eventually asserting herself in important moments with Jamie and with her mom. One of my favorite aspects of the book is how each of the main characters are queer and trans, but that's not central to the book's plot. They're just part of who those characters are. Jamie is a trans boy, one of Arden's new friends is asexual, and another new friend is a queer girl. Arden herself is queer and is questioning whether she might be asexual too. I love writing queer characters, just being who they are in the world. And like my debut novel, Between Perfect and Real, I hope that Arden Gray will help LGBTQ plus teens feel seen too. Thank you for all you do to get books into the hands of kids who need them. Hey there, everyone. My name's Eric Smith, and I'm so excited to tell you about my new book, Jagged Little Pill, written with Alanis Morissette, Diablo Cody, and Glenn Ballard. Honestly, I'm so not used to saying that out loud, and I don't know if I ever will be. I can't believe this is happening. Jagged Little Pill is a young adult adaptation of the award-winning Broadway musical centering on the teen voices from the show. Readers meet Frankie, Nick, Bella, Phoenix, and Joe, all of whom were at this big crossroad moment in their lives, with one another, with their families, and with the world. Uh, Frankie's adopted and wrestling with identity and her family's drive uh, to just be perfect all the time and avoid any kind of confrontation. Joe, her best friend, wants to be accepted by her homophobic mother while juggling her undefined relationship with Frankie, her best friend. Phoenix is a new kid with the soul of a poet and a sick sister back home and a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. Bella wants nothing more than to just enjoy the last few months of high school, and Nick, Frankie's older brother, wants his family to quit pressuring him to be flawless. 
all of these stories collide when Bella is sexually assaulted at a party, and it looks like the person behind it might just get away. Uh, everyone has to rally and raise their voices, learn how to be allies and be truthful, while simultaneously wrestling with their own personal demons and traumas. Jagged Little Pill is full of complicated relationships, friendships on the rocks, struggling families, and also a lot of hope. Because it's oftentimes when things feel their darkest that we find a bit of light, not just to shine a way out for ourselves, but for everyone around us. Uh, as a transracial adoptee, you know, Frankie's story in Jagged Little Pill absolutely grabbed me. You know, when you're raised questioning your identity and struggling with the question, so where are you from from? You know, you find yourself in a constant search for answers and grow frustrated when you can't find them. A lot of what Jagged Little Pill is about is that frustration, the fight to be heard. You know, whether it's Frankie wanting her family to understand that she's different and that's okay, Bella's fight to have a voice, or, or Nick's struggle to be his own person. Uh, that theme, being heard, is one of the many reasons I love young adult books so much, and why Jagged Little Pill works so well as a novel for teenagers. You know, YA is full of great stories about finding your voice, and when you found it, using it. I'm just so honored to get to write this one alongside some artists I wildly admire. I grew up listening to Alanis Morissette. I've loved every movie Diablo Cody has ever written. And now here I am, shooting this video for all of you. So thank you, all of you who are listening right now. I hope you enjoy meeting Frankie, Nick, Bella, Phoenix, and Joe uh, as much as I loved writing them. Hi, my name is Liesl Adams and my book is called Battle Royale. Battle Royale is about a teenager named Rose who wants to become a chef. She enlists the help of her best friend, Fred, and together they decide to enter the biggest, most competitive international baking competition on TV. The competition is actually five rounds of bizarre challenges. My favorite one is the food fight. There's tons of backstage rivalry, drama, humor, and a bit of romance to sweeten the deal. This book is partly inspired by my love of baking. There are some recipes in the book related to the story that anyone can try. There is a bit of inspiration also from the many cooking competitions you see on TV, instead made into something really extreme and fun and kooky. And the themes are connected with how much you are willing to risk to be a success, and also that you don't necessarily have to be cutthroat to be a good chef or to be good at anything. I hope you enjoy it.